Welcome to eMIMS webinar on Mastering AWS Code Deploy with Jenkins and Puppet. We're really lucky today to have two AWS experts joining us, our CTO, Aron Adam, and our software automation engineer, Mikhail Pantelimon. Um, we'll be taking questions after the presentation. Our presentation will be about 45 minutes, and then there will be time for questions. You can submit your questions in the Q&A text box below. Um, so let's get started. Aron? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for your time uh, joining us uh, for our first webinar. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, deployment pipelines, and uh, this is the challenge uh, of uh, understanding why are they hard and how can we solve the problems uh, that they present. So let's, um, why, let's first try to understand why are these so hard. Um, more and more companies deploy continuously, and even those that don't uh, deploy more often than they used to. These frequent deployments happen on dynamic clusters that auto-scale in multiple staging, uh, testing, and production environments. The, the pipeline needs to be designed, and it needs to withstand large peaks in traffic, and still be highly available with no single point of failure. Uh, these are all uh, production systems with users on, on them, and we need to deploy our code with zero downtime uh, on a live system. This is a hard challenge, and more and more of our customers face this challenge with every new version they want to deploy. They come to us to ask for our help. They need uh, us to build a, them a deployment pipeline which will ease the deployment process and lower the risk for them. Um, so what we are going to show you in this session. Um, by the end of this session, you will have the basic building blocks that will give you the knowledge on how you can build a delivery pipeline. Uh, this will allow you, you and your company to deploy um, your application AWS in a predictable and a rep repeatable way. And most important of all, it will be easy to use uh, for the Jenkins uh, UI. We do this using open source components freely available like Puppet uh, and Jenkins together with the new code deploy service by Amazon. Code deploy is a proprietary service by Amazon, but it's freely available and it, there's no additional charge for using it. Um, this delivery pipeline is repeatable and predictable. It works on any scale and is designed to support zero downtime and no single point of failure. A little bit about eMind, uh, about our company and what we do. Um, we are ex an experts company. We are doing cloud and cloud only uh, since, 19, uh, since 2007. This is actually when AWS was a year old baby with no console and the only only an API for those of you who remember. We focus only on the DevOps and continuous integration delivery parts and are doing only that. We work with all the major cloud vendors, AWS of course, um, Google Cloud and Azure, and we're also a reseller of these platforms. In the last seven years we deployed over 900 different applications to these clouds, uh, we are the Israeli market leader, and our architects and DevOps teams can take your product all the way to success. Uh, I think this is a good uh, uh, point to uh, transfer to Michai, who is our uh, own uh, code deploy expert and automation uh, leading the automation efforts in uh, eMind. So, uh, Michai, please take it from here. Thanks, Aaron. Hi, everyone. I am Mihai Pandelimon. I'm a software engineer with uh, seven years of background in uh, Java and C++ development. And since one year ago, I embraced this new opportunity of working in the cloud by becoming a part of uh, the automation and development team at uh, eMind. We as a team uh, try to help our customers automate their processes in, the, in, the, in their cloud systems. And as part of this job, for the last uh, five to six months, I've been working on developing and continuously improving a CI and CD solution uh, for the AWS cloud. For those of you who are not really familiar with the acronym, CI and CD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery. The solution was uh, developed for both Linux and Windows 
and is centered around the three components Oron already mentioned, which are uh, Puppet for configuration management, uh, Code Deploy for uh, or as a deployment coordinator, and Jenkins as the orchestrator of the build and deploy system. Now a few words about Puppet because uh, you may remember that the original title of the webinar mentioned it uh, as a masterless and uh, nodeless puppet. So we changed the title uh, a bit because we felt Jenkins deserved to have a part of it. But I still need to mention we are using a masterless and nodeless puppet. So uh, what does masterless mean? It means that uh, each machine acts like its uh, own master. The catalog compilation is done on each machine, and in this scenario, the versioning control system becomes the central configuration repository. And the nodeless means that uh, you no longer have to define nodes individually, so that uh, Puppet runs according to instance type details calculated according to facts, which uh, in the case of a cloud, it can be very well instance metadata like tags in the Amazon case. So we could say it's uh, like a fact-driven puppet. Now some words on uh, code deploy. This is uh, not meant to be a beginner's training on code deploy, but rather an introduction or a reminder so as to make sure everyone has a minimum level of knowledge and understanding on what it is and uh, what it does exactly. So by definition, uh, Amazon's code deploy is uh, an AWS service which helps coordinating application deployments to groups of instances which can be either EC2 instances, on-premises instances, or even uh, auto-scaling groups. And I found this uh, diagram on the code deploy user guide and I borrowed it because it uh, really shows all the components of uh, code deploy. Uh, so code deploy aims at uh, answering uh, three questions. One is uh, what we want to deploy, second uh, where to deploy and the uh, third how. And uh, for the first question, you have the box in the bottom left corner of the diagram. And uh, this is where we prepare a revision, a revision meaning uh, a deployable version uh, containing uh, deployable content like uh, source code, build artifacts, web pages, executables, you name it, and deployment scripts that are to be executed by code deploy. Plus, there is a metadata file called an app spec, which uh, basically specifies exactly where uh, each file should be copied to and uh, which scripts to be executing in, uh, in which order. So uh, once we have uh, such a revision prepared, uh, uh, command in code deploy uh, creates a zip archive out of it and uploads it to the S3 bucket or even a GitHub repository. Uh, now for the second question, uh, where to deploy? Uh, in code deploy, there is a concept uh, called the deployment group, which is basically a group of instances uh, identified uh, simply by tags or uh, by auto-scaling group names. And uh, each of these machines runs inside of them a piece of software called uh, Code Deploy Agent. And this functionality of uh, the code deploy service communicating with the individual agents makes uh, the whole process uh, platform agnostic. Uh, finally, the third uh, question would be how to deploy, and this is where another concept uh, comes into play uh, called uh, deployment configuration, which is basically a constraint that uh, determines how a deployment progresses uh, through the instances uh, that comprise the deployment group. So once we have uh, this uh, defined, 
that you can uh, very easily do from the Amazon console or from uh, CLI. Uh, the next step is to trigger the deployment. This is the step number three in the di diagram. And uh, at this point, depending on the deployment configuration selected, uh, when the order comes for an instance to be deployed to, the agent uh, goes to the S3 bucket or the GitHub repository and fetches the revision to deploy to. And uh, based on the instructions specified in the app spec file, we'll uh, copy the files, uh, the deployable content, and run the deployment scripts. Now, why exactly did we choose code deploy? Before that, we we're using M Collective as a way of doing uh, deployments in AWS and uh, more specifically for kicking off Puppet runs on remote machines. And we used it because it's an integral part of Puppet, but it uh, came with a lot of uh, pain points uh, which CodeDeploy manages to successfully solve. And uh, the main ones are the predictability of the deployment. Uh, the end collective was using a machine discovery mechanism based on timeouts. A machine, if not uh, answering in time, was uh, simply skipped from the deployment we, and we didn't get any kind of warning at least. In this case, being part of the Amazon infrastructure, everything comes uh, natural when it comes to machine discovery for code deploy. Uh, as I said already, this is based on uh, machine tags. Uh, then the deployment tracking, there was no way of uh, verifying the status of the deployment uh, in real time with them collective, but it is with uh, code deploy when uh, you can actually see the status per machine and for each machine per deployment phase directly from the management console. The third pain point would be the system downtime. Uh, we had to engineer it ourselves with M Collective uh, in our application to be able to simulate kind of a rolling update. But in code deploy, it's as simple as uh, specifying uh, which deployment configuration uh, to use, and the rolling update will be will become natural for uh, the co-deployed application. Uh, regarding the rollback, actually there is no automatic support in uh, neither of them collective and co-deploy, but in them collective, again, we had to engineer it ourselves in the code to support such rollback. While in co-deploy, it's uh, as simple to simulate as just deploying some previous working revision. And finally, the use complexity, well, there can be no argument here that the management console's UI is uh, rather trivial to use when compared to triggering MCO CLI commands. A little bit about the rolling update because this is where uh, a lot of heavy lifting in, is done by CodeDeploy. And uh, the rolling update, as I told you, is based on uh, deployment configuration, which is uh, nothing more than a health constraint. Actually, this specified the number of hosts that are to be kept uh, healthy at all times during a deployment. And uh, actually, CodeDeploy comes up with uh, three built-in deployment configurations that you can find in the console in a drop-down list, and you can select either of them. These are all at once, half at a time, and one at a time. Uh, the first one starts all the, deploy, the deployment on all the machines uh, simultaneously. Uh, the half at a time attempts to keep at least half of the fleet uh, up all the time, and one at a time is the most conservative, but also the slowest. And it attempts to deploy each machine uh, sequentially. Uh, this is probably the most uh, useful 
one for a production environment, but also if uh, one machine fails, then the deployment is considered uh, to be failed altogether. Uh, these uh, health constraints are uh, based on three parameters. Uh, basically ways to define how many hosts you want to be kept healthy all the time. And if you are not satisfied or none of these built-in uh, configurations suits your needs, then you can create your own custom deployment configuration. You can do it uh, only from CLI or API. And you, what you have to do is just specify one of the uh, health constraint uh, keys and uh, one value for it. Going on, I'm going to show you a real case of uh, an architecture we developed for uh, one of our customers. Uh, part of it, as uh, the whole architecture is much more complicated than uh, I discussed so far, is not of uh, real interest for uh, today's discussion, but just uh, aims to show you how complex the entire solution uh, had, has become. Uh, what you're interested in here is that uh, we have Jenkins as the orchestrator with uh, two jobs defining it. One is the build job and one is the deploy job. And the build job, except uh, doing other internal kitchen stuff, uh, is also communicating to code deploy and prepares the revision. And when triggering the deployment, Again, Jenkins communicates with the code deploy to, to run this uh, previously prepared revision to the selected deployment group or environment in this case. What happens at uh, deploy time is that uh, a number of uh, deployment scripts are executed in order. The first one attempts to deregister each machine from uh, DLB it, uh, is part of, if any. The second one attempts to update the code, including the puppet code, and uh, run it to finalize the update of the whole application and the configuration. Then a uh, local parser script is uh, run. This is a, a way for us to determine the deployment status, the success or failure of the deployment on a machine. If uh, the deployment happened to fail, then, uh, I mean, if this log parser signals an error, then the entire deployment for this machine is considered a failure. This happens for all these phases. And uh, depending on the deployment configuration, this may abort the entire deployment or not. Finally, the machine is uh, attempted to be registered back to DLB if it uh, was previously registered one. All right, I told you earlier that we are using a masterless and nodeless puppet. And uh, now I would like to let Oron tell us uh, why exactly did you choose this uh, masterless and nodeless approach and uh, why it is the best approach for us. Oron? Okay, so um, basically, when you're using uh, Puppet, was designed uh, in the beginning uh, with a, as a with a master in mind. So there is a single point of failure in this case where the master is uh, accepting requests from uh, hosts that want to be configured, and is uh, sending the manifest and everything to these hosts. Now, when you're working in production environments and you want to have a um, high availability and have uh, something that will not fail when the cluster is uh, auto-scaling and things like that, uh, you have to design uh, really a, a, a cluster of Puppet Masters. Uh, so building, a, building this cluster, maintaining it, and syncing the manifest between the different uh, masters uh, is a big headache. And um, we, we prefer to work in, it, in the terms of masters, so you don't need to sync the manifests. And the code, uh, the manifest is really the code that describes the infrastructure. Um, and uh, this is error prone. Uh, we much better use Git uh, to sync the manifest into the instances. Um, and this is the, the single source for true for, for the manifests that go into the machines. 
all the manifests are pulled off the, of git and um uh another another option is to use uh, something like um an internal uh, linux uh, repository which is highly available it's easy to to have them highly available it's just an nginx with uh, with a uh, disk um the the manifests are deployed to each of the instances and we just run puppet apply locally so it's really like every every host is its own puppet master um this eliminates all the drawbacks of puppet master so no single point of failure it's a very scalable solution so there's no denial of service on the master by uh, a cluster that's uh, scaling up or down um there's simple network requirements and there's no need to, to configure certificates uh, for those of you who know puppet master uh, it was more designed to um, say bare metal or, or real servers scenario so um, you need to sign the certificates this this prevents you this um, becomes irrelevant when you work in the cloud um, the only drawback here is that there's no central dashboard the puppet uh, puppet enterprise works with the master and the, the dashboard uh, that gives you some sort of reports on what's happening um, with your deployments uh gathers information by hosts connecting to the master so this is something that you lose on the other hand um we can look at the status of deployments by uh, looking at the code deploy in the amazon console this, so this is this is some sort of a uh, of a solution for that okay so we've seen uh, two of the components being justified i feel like i need to say a few words about uh, why you chose jenkins well, it's uh, a very easy to get started with tool. And it was uh, specifically of big importance for us since uh, at the end of the development, we have to hand over the solution to our customers. And uh, their engineers may or may have not uh, worked with Jenkins before, and it's uh, real easy to, to catch up, at least for what is needed to, to operate this uh, automation solution. Then it's uh, probably the only open source solution from all the big continuous integrations, uh, continuous integration programs with a lot, a lot of uh, plugins and a very good support throughout the community. And uh, this was uh, again of uh, big relevance for us since the dynamics of the cloud uh, imposes us to adapt to every new feature or uh, change. Actually, we had to add support to one of the Jenkins plugins for our Windows solution. And it was uh, straightforward to do it uh, with the help of the support uh, people of the, the creator of the plugin and the uh, open sourceness of the components. Finally, there is a table I found on the Wikipedia page, and you can find the link in the presentation. Uh, basically, Jenkins supports more versioning control systems than uh, all the other uh, CI solutions. And again, this was uh, important for us since all the customers we've had so far had different uh, versioning systems, like uh, either Git or SVN or uh, TFS. And this is how the dashboard looks like in a simple case scenario where you have uh, two jobs. One is the, the build job, one is the deploy job. And operating them, it's as simple as uh, just clicking on this uh, icon on the right-hand side of the line, which uh, would open up the screen that you can use to run that uh, particular job so for the, the build phase what the user should do is just to select the development to the environment to build for in this case the development and this is a drop down list that we populate according to the customer's needs and uh, specify the application version to build in the same manner the deployment is a uh, just a matter of uh, selecting the environment to deploy to and uh, selecting the version to deploy which is uh, 
can be selected from a list which is pre-populated with uh, all the versions that were previously created uh, with the build job. So this is uh, a way of helping users not uh, having to introduce the version uh, themselves. Okay, uh, we had an overview of all the main components. I guess it's time to, to have a demo. And uh, for the sake of this demo, I just want to briefly present you the architecture so that it will make much more sense to you. Uh, there will be a Jenkins setup with the two jobs that I mentioned, uh, the build and the deploy. Uh, there will be an environment, uh, deploy environment containing three machines, two of them running uh, in the, the Oregon region and one of them in uh, Sao Paulo, in South America. And uh, this is where I must thank Arthur for uh, the inspiration. He really inspired us to present deployment in uh, other regions using on-premises instances, which is a relatively new feature introduced by uh, code deploy. So uh, in Oregon, we have two machines. One uh, is tagged with the uh, environment tag dev, and the other one is with prod. And uh, the machine in South America is also tagged with the uh, environment dev. Deployment group will contain the dev environment, and this is why the deployment will be propagated only to these two green box machines. And uh, I will leave the presentation mode to explain you a bit more about the components. So we have the two machines prepared here with the tags uh, well defined. We have uh, a load balancer with both uh, machines that are running uh, in Oregon in it. This doesn't make much sense, of course, but for the sake of the demo, I wanted to show you how the machine leaves the ELB and uh, joins it again after the deployment. We also have a code deploy application, and this is where uh, the deployment uh, group was configured to use the environment dev. Finally, we have uh, the S3 bucket where the, all the code deploy revisions are stored, and we already have uh, three pre-prepared revisions from our earlier testing, but we'll create a new one. And the application that we'll uh, deploy is just a simple Java application that displays a web page. What's important is that this uh, web page displays uh, three pieces of information which are configurable through a configuration file. And of the utmost importance are the version and the environment, and uh, I'll show you why. This is how the application running in the three machines look like. Uh, basically, we specified the name by this is only for uh, being able to track what machine we are talking about. The version that it's running, the software version, the application version, and the uh, environment that is defined through the text that I showed you. So we have this uh, dev machine in Oregon running uh, uh, version 101. We have the prod machine in Oregon running an earlier version of the application, 1.0.0. And uh, the machine in Brazil also running 1.0.1. And uh, what I'll do now is uh, try to simulate uh, an application new version. And I'll do this by incrementing the version here. Save it, and I will commit the change to to Git. And right now, I am waiting for the new version to become available in Git. And uh, I must mention that uh, Jenkins has uh, two ways of working. You can either uh, do the git polling uh, trigger it manually or have it uh, triggered on a 
specific hooks so that you can uh, run a build job uh, automatically after a new commit is uh, pushed to the system. But for the sake of this demo and uh, actually our solutions to offer the biggest uh, flexibility maybe for the, the engineers of the customer, we separated this uh, two phases and we'll trigger the build manually. And uh, I'm doing it uh, from the build job. I'm selecting the new version that we created. And now Jenkins offers a console with the progress. So you can see now how the Git repository was updated. Uh, there is an extra step that we do uh, into verifying the puppet code. Uh, for uh, code style warnings or uh, compilation errors. And uh, finally, the AWS uh, CLI command for deploying, actually for creating the deployment and pushing the revision to S3 was uh, run. The build was successfully finished. And if we go back to the dashboard, you can see this is the status of the latest uh, job run and this is an icon with a weather-like uh, metaphor for uh, describing the stability of the build based on the result of the latest several builds so this is all green for now we have the new revision ready and we should find it in the s3 bucket and now if uh, we go back to jenkins and attempt to deploy this uh, newly created revision, we get the new version uh, populated in the drop-down list. And I'm uh, selecting build. In this case, we can also uh, try to see the detailed status per machine and per deployment phase from the console. We see the deployment has uh, already been started. It contains uh, two instances, just like we intended, which are the two dev machines, one in Oregon and one in uh, Brazil. And if we go here, we can see the detailed status per machine. Going further on, we can see the seven deploy phases, or also called in uh, code deploy terminology, deployment lifecycle events. And uh, after all the status uh, cells become red, this means the deployment finished for this machine. And uh, next one we start, that's because we selected uh, one at a time uh, deployment configuration. Uh, this was actually the machine running in, uh, in Oregon. And if I go here, and attempt to reload the page, I should see the version 103 appearing. Also, the same thing should happen for the machine in uh, Brazil. And uh, by going to Jenkins, again, we'll see that the deployment finished and uh, it only lasted like one minute and uh, 30 seconds. So this is basically an indication of uh, the time spent on uh, miscellaneous stuff and uh, behind the scenes uh, uh, task that uh, CodeDeploy takes care for us. Now I'd like to demonstrate one last thing. And this is uh, the possibility to tag the machines and I'm doing this by simply retagging the prod machine to dev so that we can hopefully make it uh, take part in a, in a deployment also. So I uh, change the tag to dev and I go back to the Jenkins console. I remember that the prod machine was running version 100 and uh, from Jenkins, I'll say, let's upload or let's upgrade to 102 and downgrade all the other machines back to 102. 
So I'm re-triggering the deployment task. Uh, if you want to do uh, fine-grained uh, monitoring of the deployment status, you can do it from the Amazon console. But if you want to have an overview of the entire deployment, you can uh, see it from Jenkins, where uh, the Jenkins job will track the full uh, status of the entire deployment and finish when uh, the full deployment is finished. And uh, if I go here to DLB, I should see that one of the machines, the prod machine in Oregon, uh, has left uh, the ELB, meaning that uh, it's, uh, it's turned now for being deployed to. I'm going back to look at the progress per machine. And this is where we know that this machine has uh, finished with the deployment. And this actually happened to be probably the, the prod machine, which should now rejoin the ELB. So the prod machine rejoined the ELB, but the dev machine in Oregon left it for be, to be deployed. But if we go to the page of the prod machine, we'll see only not that the, the version was upgraded to 102, but also that the prod environment was uh, changed to dev. And this is done by virtue of Puppet, which uh, takes care of uh, gathering all the machine tags, creating effects from it, and using them uh, for their own in the application configuration. So uh, I guess this was uh, enough for the demo part. I'm going back to the presentation mode. And I'd like to say a few words about the pitfalls that CoDeploy has, because it's not only milk and honey, like we've advertised before, but there are also some uh, pitfalls with CoDeploy. This is the bad news. But the good news is that we managed to have workarounds for all of these four uh, pitfalls. And uh, probably the major one is that it's only supported in uh, four regions for now. But uh, as I showed you, we can uh, use the on-premises uh, feature to deploy to other regions, like we did uh, to the machine in Brazil. So this is uh, one of the pitfalls we had to work around for. The second is that you cannot delete your revisions from the console. and. Uh, this makes the deployment from the console be really hard to, to go on with uh, because of all the historic revisions stored there. The revision history quickly becomes cluttered with the useless crap. Uh, so in this case, uh, what we managed to do was to hide everything behind uh, Jenkins. So now you do the deployment from Jenkins and uh, behind the scenes, you don't care how many revisions have been created before. You just see the, the drop down list with all the versions you can uh, deploy, and uh, that's about it. Thirdly, there are some uh, rolling update scripts for Linux, and they're available on GitHub by the Amazon team, but there was no support for Windows for such thing. And, uh, we actually had to create those scripts ourselves in uh, PowerShell. So this is also checked. And finally, there is no way to pass arguments to the lifecycle event scripts yet. Uh, this uh, was also worked around by us uh, by design. And uh, this basically strikes through the entire list. And I have a slide here uh, detailing a bit uh, of details on this uh, solution of deploying to other regions by using on-premises instances. And if you want to do it, I must uh, instruct you to follow the section which says uh, manually configure and register an on-premises instance from the code deploy user guide. Uh, this is because the automatic procedure will fail 
it uh, doesn't support uh, taking EC2 instances and considering them as on-premises instances, but the manual procedure uh, works and we are currently working ourselves towards uh, creating an automation uh, solution to make this automated in our uh, CI-NCD architecture. So once you follow all those steps in the procedure, what you do from the code deploy perspective is uh, tag the machine. You do this from the code deploy console this time. Uh, you select tags just like you do with the normal EC2 instances. Then when you define the deployment group, you can uh, select the tag KM value just like you do for the EC2 instances. And then there's a proof that the deployment to another region actually succeeded. Now, in terms of integration between Jenkins and CodeDeploy, there is a, a plugin developed by the Amazon CodeDeploy team, but we found it to be really rudimentary, too basic for our needs, because it does not allow the separation of the two phases, the build and the deploy. You can't really configure the destination of the deployed files. It uses the same path as uh, where the content is found on the uh, deployment machine, on the build machine. And uh, finally, there is no way to define hook scripts. And this was of uh, big importance for us in order to run Puppet at deploy time. So what we did is uh, actually use uh, AWS CLI commands from the build scripts in uh, Jenkins. This way we managed to obtain full control of the entire flow. And all the three phases of uh, preparing the revision, of uh, pushing it to S3 and to deploy it further on are attained with this uh, fine control script. To summarize what we talked about, if I were to say it in one phrase, I would say that now with this solution, the deployments in the Amazon cloud are only a few clicks away. And we do this with Puppet uh, as a configuration management tool with code deploy, which quickly becomes the de facto deployment tool for uh, AWS. And with Jenkins as a cross-platform, easy to use and integrate with uh, CI solution. And uh, what the customer needs to do after handing over this solution to him is just play with, with uh, the machine tags, configure them through the tags from the console, and then triggering the build and the deploy jobs from Jenkins with only a few clicks and keystrokes. So I hope I was clear enough in my presentation but not enough so that you don't have anything to ask. So we're just uh, waiting for your questions now. Okay. Thank you, Mihai. Um, so I just wanted to um, uh, open it up to questions. So if you have any questions, you can ask them in the Q&A box. We have a few. Um, and if you'd like to reach us, after the webinar, you can reach Aron. His email is here. Michai's email is here as well. And for any general questions or information, you can write us at info at emind.co and follow us on Facebook for more updates and events like this. Um, and of course, our website, emind.co. Um, so I'm going to go to the first question. It's from Itai. And he asks, um, are there template files for the app spec file? Uh, for example, an aspect for a general Java Play application. So, Arom, do you want to take that? Um, okay. So, um, basically, the, the app spec file is very generic. Uh, so, you can put any uh, bash commands there or, or um, any other shell commands. Uh, so it's only a matter of finding somebody who al already developed uh, something for for a play application, but it's it's really a very non-specific file. So 
if you can find somebody to share it with you, great. But I don't know of any templates that AWS um, uh, give, but maybe Michai knows more. No, we have some samples to demonstrate the different uh, sections, but uh, this is about it. They don't try to, to solve any specific problems with templates. Um, does it work with other web Git re repository providers such as Assembla and Bitbucket? Do you guys have anything to say about that? So as far as, far as we know, uh, right now only GitHub is, uh, is uh, in place. Uh, I'm sure that you know it's a, it's a pretty new service. Um, it's only available in part of the regions. Um, they're going to introduce, I think, more providers and more features. This is the, the way Amazon has been working always. They they release something which is uh, works pretty well, but is uh, lacks features sometimes, and they gradually add the features as they go. So I would expect more providers to be in there. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a comment from Roy. Uh, if you work with the ENC, such as Foreman, you don't need to sign the certificates. The Foreman server signs the certificates. Um, do we have a comment about that? Okay, so th this is true. Uh, th this still doesn't solve the problem of being a single point of failure. So if the ENC uh, goes down, uh, new nodes won't be configured. Uh, so it, it's still uh, the headache of creating the cluster uh, of uh, Foreman's. Um, so it's, it, it solves some of the problems, but we're still facing the problems of creating the, um, a cluster of machines to handle all this puppet mastery. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Tarun. Where do you configure what all packages to install in Puppet when a new machine is created in the autoscaling group? So Michai, maybe you take this one. I'm not really sure I understand the question. Okay, and, uh, so where do you configure uh, packages? Which, which packages? Which, which packages to install? I, I'm, I assume that the, the meaning is like uh, you know how how you define the role of the machine. Like how do you know which packages to install when the machine is uh, is is created on auto scaling? All right, I got the question. Uh, yeah, actually we. We didn't have uh, any deployment so far with uh, which contain on the scaling groups, so it's not part of our solution right now. Uh, but probably we can uh, figure out something and come back offline with a, a proposal or a specific case. Okay, so uh, Tyron can take it offline with you. Um, okay, what about you mentioned log parser? Is this provided by Cloud Deploy um, or is it a custom script? Who is asking this? This is also from Tar Tarun. No, the log parser was uh, a specific example for that uh, particular customer. Of course, uh, for some of them it's not applicable, but uh, there is generally a good. Uh, Thing to have some way of uh, verifying that the deployment succeeded in some uh, strict way. So it was created by us from scratch. In that case, it was just a Python script, but uh, there was just more like, a, during the presentation, more like a placeholder for uh, the phase where we want to verify the deployment uh, outcome. Okay. By the way, by the way, this is maybe a good time to say that you know um, um, there are you know the devil is in the details. So uh, this is a good time to to ask uh, any of you that want to talk to us further, uh, contact us. We will be happy to discuss the solution uh, and help you implement your own uh, delivery pipeline. Great, thank you, Aron and Michai. Um, and like Aron said, be in touch with us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. Oh, and by the way, there's a poll that you can fill out. Um, uh, just go to the polls down below, and you can fill out a quick survey. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.